In this guided lab, you are going to follow along with this form that you have and just do what, um, you know, you can just follow along. That's what a guided lab is. It kind of gives you step by step of what to do and only has a few things for you to experiment on your own. Um, and then the next lab will be an inquiry using these same skills. And the inquiry is something that you make up and you decide um, what you're going to do with this and what kind of experiment you're going to try. So in this guided lab part, what you need is a large measuring cup that holds, I would say, at least two cups in it, but that has um, traditional like cups and it has um, the metric units like the breakdowns of um, milliliters and liters. Um, and then you're going to need a thermometer. I tried a few different of my thermometers and what worked best was a traditional thermometer. I know that these are more rare now, they're hard to get. Um, you can get them online at various online shops um, for relatively cheap, um, but you would just have to order that as soon as possible so that you can get it in. The reason why you would want one of these and you can test out your own is to make sure that it can um, go in places like in cold places and warm places and not just human body. So I had like a human body type of, you know, thermometer. And as soon as it went too low or too hot, it just said cold or low or high. It didn't list the actual number. So as long as you have a thermometer that will list the number, that's fine. And then You'll need a measuring tape, um, something that's at least a meter long. So this is longer than a ruler. This is about the length from the floor to your waist or the floor to a doorknob is about a meter. So you can use these little like fabric sewing ones. You could use like, a, you know, the metal kind that you use in like outdoors or measuring um, in woodworking or something like that. Measuring tape, that's fine. Um, so those are the three at home supplies that you need for this. So this is really teaching you the conversion of the metric system. This is a picture um, just for compliance and people like maybe can't see this. This is just a picture of me at a research station out in Borneo. So um, we used measurements all the time there to all of the temperature. We did for sure temperature and measurements all the time. Um, so those are very common tools and they're very easy to carry just in your backpack right here and have what you need. So you're going to read along and do a few conversions and um, learn about um, how to convert between different things. And, and uh, in the United States, we, um, we and like two other countries, I think, use the old tradition, like traditional measurement system of like inches and foot. But most, most countries have moved on from gallons and that kind of thing. And they have moved um, to this, which is the international system of measurement. And it's all broken down by tens and it's pretty clear. But in the United States, it's not clear to us because we weren't raised with it. But in science, we use that. So that's what you're going to be using here. Um, so here's some basic conversions. And um, then... Here's some more conversions for you. For some of you guys, you maybe understood this years ago um, in high school or maybe even earlier. For some of you guys, it's still a mystery. If this is still hard for you to break down um, conversions between one unit to the next, where if it asks you a question like, how many millimeters are in a meter? If that is hard for you to figure out, please um, consider, here's a reading that I wrote um, on that, or please watch this YouTube video that kind of breaks that down. Um, I think it's easier for a lot of you guys to watch the video um, than to do the reading, but that is up to you. Both ways are there. So then you are going to be doing um, some conversions here. And remember that you should always use decimals, not fractions. And uh, you should always have, if you're going to write, if the answer is something like 0.55, you always put a zero in front of the decimal. Okay, so, so I wrote out a few rules there. 
Then um, here's another chart for the met metric unit of length, and you're going to do a few conversions. Again, you can refer back to this video if you're having trouble or sound off on the discussion board and see um, if you know you can get help that way. Then you are going to answer some questions about that. And you're going to measure a few things. So here you're going to measure a few things here um, and tell us how long or short like things are in your home. Um, then I'm going to give you a, a chance to um, find something that would be a millimeter, a micrometer, or a nanometer. These would be extremely small. So um, I want you to insert a picture here of each of those, and some of them you're just going to find on the internet, but um, and then write the approximate sizes of the object that you found. Then you're going to measure this um, circle. You're going to find it in micrometers. You're going to find it in nanometers. For volume, that's where you're going to use your measuring cup, and there's a little bit of background here. What you're going to do for your volume is you're going to find something rectangular in your house. I just suggested like a tissue box, but you could do a small wooden block if you have little kids in your house and have little blocks. Or you could do um, just find a rectangular object, something that's small enough that you can measure it. And you're going to find the length at times the width times the height, and that will give you the volume of the small rectangular object. So you're going to calculate volume. And then um, volume of a liquid is a little bit different. So this is a picture of a graduated cylinder, and it shows that at the bottom of what's called the meniscus, it actually shows a smaller number than up on the sides. Water has a property um, called adhesion where it actually holds on or crawls up the side of the container that it's on. And um, this property is actually really cool. It makes it so that um, you can even pump blood through your veins a little bit better because water crawls up the sides. It helps it so that plants can get water all the way from the roots to the top because it parsh the water partially will crawl a little bit itself. Um, so when you're measuring though, do you measure from up here or down here at the bottom? You actually measure from the bottom of the meniscus. So because I don't know that any of you guys have something as skinny as a graduated cylinder or even a test tube in your house, um, you will probably not get to see a meniscus um, in your in your picture in like whatever you do. But um, in um, yours, you'll use a regular measuring cup and you're going to measure a few, things as like I suggested some examples a cereal bowl um, a glass bottle a small plastic cup you could do a Tupperware whatever and I want you to find out what the volume is by using your your measuring cup like this find out what the volume of each of those are um, in metric units and you're going to record that in the table here your second um, exercise is not measuring a liquid. Sometimes you have a weirdly shaped object and I suggested in here using a small rock. So you don't have to use a rock. You could use some other small object that'll sink. Um, but sometimes you have something weird that you need to find the volume of. So you can actually dunk it under the water and then see how much it made the water come up. So that's another way of finding volume. So I suggested a rock. You can try something else if you truly don't have a rock, but you'll put a certain level of water in your measuring cup, then put the rock in and see how much it came up. If one small rock isn't enough to make it raise up that you can see a difference, then try a couple of rocks or try a bigger rock or some bigger object that you have. And then you're gonna do a second object of your choice where you find the volume. Um, then you're going to find the volume of a large uh, rectangular um, object in your house. And I suggested a cereal box, a large plastic container, your fridge, something like that, where you multiply the length and the um, width and then the height. Um, and you will figure that out. 
And then you are going to um, calculate its weight using these, these calculations here. And then <clears throat> you're going to move on to calculating um, temperature. So with temperature, um, here's um, like a little bit of a some bullet points on on different temperatures and you're going to learn how to convert those. And then you're going to take the room temperature surface on your skin. Um, you're going to take a temperature of cold water and warm water in the refrigerator. And then at the very end, you have a few questions to answer here. Um, and then you are finished with your lab. So that is your um, guided lab on metric measurement.